The Century Arms AP5, let's check it out. HK introduced the MP5 in 1966, and the HK94 is the semi-automatic version. Uh, it served in militaries all over the world in a lot of different conflicts since that time. Also has served with a lot of police units as well. Also on the federal level with the US, uh, there's been a lot of agencies that have used the MP5. And one of the big reasons is because it has the delayed roller lock blowback action which makes it one of the smoothest shooting 9mm PDWs out on the market. One of the things about a 9mm blowback PDW is that it can have some recoil to it that's even a little more than your 5.56. But with the roller lock action, it delays the gases just enough and it makes it so smooth shooting. Now, HK, of course, is known for putting out really high quality stuff. And there are a lot of clones out there, which this is one of them. This is the AP5 by MKE, and these are made in Turkey, but they're made on HK machinery and originally under HK licensing. And so you have German tooling and machinery that are used to build these rifles. And to me, that really sets it apart from a lot of the other clones. Parts are compatible with HK parts, and of course, there's a ton of aftermarket accessories out there. Now, these are imported by Century Arms, and so we're just getting this into the country, and I'll tell you what, guys, this is a really quality MP5 clone, but of course it is the HK94 because it's semi-automatic. And who doesn't remember Die Hard when it comes to the MP5? Man, that made me fall in love. Now Century Arms sent the AP5 for this test and evaluation, and they also sent some of their Red Army standard 9mm steel cased, which this functioned extremely well with that ammo. Guys, when I knew this was coming in, I got really excited about it. Uh, the AP5, which actually stands for Apparatus Pistol. <laughs> and again, it's just a lot of quality. Once I pulled it out of the box, I mean, the fit and finish on this is really good. We're going to take a look at it and just check it out. And to get things started, let's go ahead and take out our magazine. Going to check the chamber, and it's empty. It comes with two 30-round magazines. Any of your HK MP5 mags will work. Now when you get your AP5, it will be in this configuration. You have a cap, uh, it's a strict pistol, there's no brace included. So when you do choose your brace, you need to make sure that it is HK compatible. One thing about these firearms is they are totally HK compatible. Any kind of HK part should fit. Over the years, there were a few changes here and there, so there may be some fitting, but overall, uh, this is HK compatible. There are some clones out there that are a little bit different. Now, MKE was originally imported by Zenith Firearms. Uh, this is one of the Zenith ZPKs. It's a really short, little small. I, I, honestly, I love this firearm. Uh, and we've had a lot of experience with it. Uh, definitely has a different type end cap, so it uses uh, not the same brace as this one as far as the mounting system. Uh, it doesn't have that cap over it. But uh, this is a great pistol. We put a lot of rounds through this firearm. Um, and so now we've got Century Arms instead of Zenith importing these into the country. And really, the quality is really on par because it's still made by the same company. Guys, this is a stamped upper receiver, and then we have a polymer lower receiver. Uh, it's very well finished, and it has a nice ample trigger guard. Uh, the grip is really easy to grab. Here on the other side, we have our selector switch. It's on safe for white. Bring it down for semi-automatic red. There is a little detent down here, but we're not allowed to have full auto, so it doesn't move. You have a paddle mag release, so we can just grab it, pull the mag out, but also 
we have another mag release right here. So you can just put that and it unlocks it. This to me, I never use. I always use the paddle mag release. It has a nice large trigger guard. And then the hand guard at the front, it's textured. It's nice and aggressive and uh, easy to grab hold of. On a lot of the really smaller versions, they'll have a little hand stop. But with this one, it's got a little bit of length to it. And uh, grabbing right here is very natural. Here you have the drum sight. It's an aperture. And you can just turn it for different elevation, or it does expand it out for a combat sight. And this is adjustable. Here on the front we have a post, and then you have it covered with this dome. The barrel is cold hammer forged. It is chrome moly vanadium, and it's 8.9 inches in length. And it's one in 9.8 twist. Leave it to the Germans. <laughs> Now you have your charging handle up front, which is different than most of your firearms, but of course with HK that's the way it works. You bring it back, lock it up into the lock position. Uh, one of the things that is known is called the HK slap, where you just take it, hit it, and it drops it into place. Now this is a non-reciprocating bolt handle, and so you're not going to have this going back and forth when you're holding on to your grip. And that's a big plus. <laughs> Now this comes with a muzzle brake, and it's got a kind of a different type release where you bring it forward, and then you can turn it and take it off, and it does have the tri-lug adapter. But then here we have half by 28 threads. And so you've got that standard tri-lug adapter so you can put suppressors on there, and of course with just your half by 28, you're able to put other suppressors on here as well, and that's dirty when we've been firing it. <laughs> So this gives you a lot of options with the firearm, whatever you want to put on there. I'm really glad that they included the muzzle brake. It just really adds a little bit to it, even though 9mm is not really you know, that big of a deal. Now when you're putting this back on, you actually lift it up like this, and then it locks into place, and it hits this bar back here. So you push back on the adapter and then pull it up, and then that will release it. And then when you get it into place, you'll notice you bring it back and then it locks right here. You'll need to make sure that thread protector is all the way down. Make sure it's in the up position when you put it back on your tri-lug adapter. And it'll spin until you take this, push it back, and then it locks into place. This just locks it onto the tri-lug adapter. Now your scope mount fits right in here. Uh, this is actually designed for the HK claw mount, which those can be pretty expensive. Uh, but it fits like this, and you just put it over, and of course use your hardware to, to tighten it down. And that way you can put a red dot or whatever sight you want to on here. Now when installing your scope mount, uh, there's some small little bars that are angled toward the mount. Uh, and you have to really put the mount on first and then slide the bars underneath until you line it up. Um, I tried a couple of different ways. That seemed to be the best way. Put a little bit of Loctite on your screw, and it should hold. It'll lock in to those little mounting points on either side. Also, at the top, there is a cutout, and it's in the mount as well, so when it fits, it actually locks into that little cutout. And so the angled part goes to the front, and then you have your edge at the back. I wish I could show this, but obviously YouTube's not going to allow that. Now, as far as trigger action goes, guys, this is not a match trigger. Have a little bit of take up, a little bit of resistance, and then you have your snap. Again, it's not all that great. We're going to check for reset, about right there. And it kind of springs it forward. And we're going to check trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brown Ales. 7 pounds, 2.8 ounces. 6 pounds, 14 ounces. So around 7 pounds. Today we're going to be shooting some Red Army Standard. Uh, this is steel case 9mm and Century Arms actually sent this, which is really a nice gesture on their part, uh, especially with ammo like it is right now. But we're going to be shooting this and we'll test it out. It's really good that we're getting some imported ammo considering how short it is lately. And when it comes to steel case ammo, I reserve that for my AKs, my SKSs, uh, you know, Soviet block type firearms. But the Red Army Standard has a very smooth finish to it. One of the problems traditionally with steel case is they'd put lacquer on it. Uh, this would preserve the case, but it could swell and cause problems, especially in your AR-15 or for that matter, even your 9mm pistol. And so Red Army Standard is doing it right. And uh, especially now that you're looking for ammunition, this could be a great option. Come on, 
do this. Now I was pretty excited about getting the AP5 down to the range and it is so smooth shooting guys. I'm telling you, if you've never experienced it, you can put a lot of different nine millimeter PDWs in line and the MP5 clone or the MP5 or the SP5 will just be so soft shooting, it'll spoil you. The quality behind this, the engineering, uh, even since 1966, it's really hard to beat this design. Uh, very soft shooting, very easy. The controls are fast to learn. Uh, of course, you have your paddle design for your mag release, so that makes it easy and very quick to get to. Uh, one of the things I like, of course, is pulling this back and doing the HK slap. And that just drives it home. Guys, the sights are easy to see. You've got your drum sights, you've got your front post. And again, it's so soft shooting that it makes it a lot of fun to shoot. Now, when we added the SB Tactical HK PDW brace, of course, that gives you a little more stability to the firearm and allows you to just be a little more accurate. But guys, this is a pistol and this is a brace. It's not a stock. But, you know, SP Tactical makes some great products anyway. But this kind of folds out. Of course, this does not come with it. It does come just standard with the pistol itself. But even with the sling, it makes it a pretty formidable firearm for self-defense. But honestly, putting on a brace really brings this one home. Now we're gonna field strip. I went ahead and took the SP Tactical brace off to show you how to do it as it comes. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and pull our action back and the gun is unloaded, magazine's out. Uh, you'll notice there's a pin at the back and there's a pin here. And so you just push this through. Uh, these are not captive, so they will come out. Uh, it's a good idea to have a couple of extras of these, by the way. <laughs> and we're going to pull our cap off and uh, it just comes straight off. Now we're going to go and push through this pin at the front, bring it out. It is the shorter pin. Then we're going to pull our action out. And then again, here you can see the hammer, very beefy, uh, solid. Again, these were made as full automatic machine guns. Bring your charging handle back, and then you can pull out your recoil spring and your bolt. Now with your recoil spring and guide rod, uh, this does just pop out, uh, but this one is pretty tight, and uh, so I'm just gonna leave it in, but you can actually just pull it out. Now here's your bolt, and you see the little rollers on either side. Uh, they depress in and out as the action moves. So you wanna take your bolt and just turn it to like a 45 degree angle, and it pops it loose. You can see where that little key fits right there. Go ahead and take it out. And then this is also locked in the same way. Just take and turn it, and then it comes out as well. Uh, you have your firing pin and spring. Now I'm going to relieve the hammer on the action, and then we take our selector switch and just bring it into the up position, and then this will pull out. That way you can pull out your trigger group or your fire control group. And so it is a really solid trigger and hammer system. And then you have just the shell. Guys, that's all you need to do to field strip the firearm. Let's get it back together. And put in our fire control group. Just line it up. Takes usually a little finagling, but it's not hard. Okay, we're going to return our firing pin. Then the slot, when you lock it in, you can see how it just fits, and you want to turn it. Then take your bolt. Same thing, and it just snaps right back. Now you want to make sure the bolt is in the out position because when it's in, you have your rollers that are extending out. So you want to push it forward, and then it'll fit right in. Get into those slots, push it all the way through. Go ahead and bring in our action. Now the pins go through the other side, so we're gonna pop it in. Now when you bring in your cap, make sure you're not binding on this bottom ledge. It's one of the things that, there it goes. Then we can replace our pin. And guys, we're done. I mean, it's not honestly that difficult to do. Now included is a sling, has the HK hook on it. I put a QD attachment point that went on to the SP Tactical PDW brace. 
but this little clamp actually fits onto the back end cap. And so this sling is a great addition, especially if you're not putting on any kind of brace. But even with the brace, it works really well. We do have a nice hard plastic case. Then you get, of course, your AP5, you get two magazines, you get a scope mount with hardware, and you get a small cleaning kit with a rod, a cleaning rod. And in the kit, you get brushes, you get some oil, and you get a swab, and a number of different things. And of course, this is a very military type little kit. As far as price goes, uh, these run $27.99 typically. And that's what I'm seeing market price all across the board. Century Arms doesn't list a manufacturer suggested price on their website. Uh, when it comes to the HK, they run about $2,950. So it's only about a $150 difference from what I'm seeing from their retail to the market price that I'm seeing for these. But the one thing about the SP5 is I looked at a number of different places where they were in stock and they're running about $4,000, give or take a little bit here and there. So with the market the way it is right now, it's hard to tell what prices are. And once things kind of calm down, we may see these prices go up. If things ratchet up, we may see these just be invaluable. And, and guys, really, this is a great quality firearm with all the HK tooling, with the German engineering that went behind it and again made right there on HK machinery. And so you're getting a really true HK clone that is very close to the original. And do I want an SP5? Oh yeah, but not for $4,000. <laughs> and again, I wanna thank Century Arms for sending the AP5 for this review. I'm a big fan of the delayed roller lock actions and the AP5 is really a fine quality gun. Guys, if you depend on a firearm for self-defense, whether concealed carry or even home defense, having some kind of legal protection is vital. I'm a member of the USCCA. I've been a member for the past three years, and it is just peace of mind. You know that someone has your back if you ever get yourself in a tough situation where you have to draw your firearm. If you are carrying concealed, uh, you should definitely have some kind of legal protection. Now, I have a link down below in the description to the USCCA membership page. It is an affiliate link, and I know that if anything ever goes down, I have a friend with USCCA. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. in your first pin whoops wrong way and so yes a lot of people want to get the HK but now for disassembly we had the magazine taken out we're gonna check to make stay over there you piece of crap that was so good oh. because so I'm amazing in 1966 HK did something and so this to me is one of those guns that Huh? Right on the knuckles. $2,500 retail. Uh, 